thing we're going to talk about is shading. I'm going to make a green mushroom top. I'm going to select my green color up here. And because the next layer that I want to do, I want to make a clipping mask. Clipping masks allow me to change things more effectively and have options throughout my process as opposed to an alpha lock, which is right here, which changes this green shape to the mushroom as I paint over it and it's more permanent. I would have to do, go back, undo several times to undo it. With a clipping mask, I don't have to do that. And in order to select my color, I'm just going to move down in the same color range and maybe a little bit more green and a little bit darker. And then I'm going to take either my soft strokes or my juicy stroke brush and I'm going to put in some color. I'm lifting my Apple Pencil because down here on the bottom, I want it to be darker. And up here, I want it to be lighter. I want it to travel up the mushroom cap so that it creates a tone. I'm going to hold my Apple Pencil on so I can smudge with the same brush. I'm gonna lower the opacity because I wanna be able to control how much I smudge and how fast I smudge it and where it goes. This is very lightly touching the mushroom, no pressure on my Apple Pencil, and I'm going to move this color around until I am satisfied with the fact that it looks painterly. I'm going to make another layer and another clipping mask and I'm going to come down to the blue section because I want some darker cool blues in my shadows. I'm going to use the same brush. I'm going to make the size smaller so that I can control where I put it here on the darker side. I'm also going to bring that down to the darker side and put something dark really across the edge like this. Okay. And then I'm also going to use the same brush to smudge. This brush gently moves around the paint that I have already put down to soften it so that it blends into the color above it. This is how you get a smooth blend on your pieces. Now I'm going to come in here and make another clipping mask. And I'm going to go to my green color here. And then I'm going to go lighter. I'm going to lower my opacity because I don't want to put down too much paint all at once. I find layering and light layers gives you a much better look on your blending than if you just put it down heavy. And so bring this down, lighter marks down here because I kind of don't want it to be too bright. I'm going to take the same blend brush and I'm going to gently just move the paint around to get rid of the marks that it left. And I'm going to slowly blend it into the mushroom cap and the colors below. It's kind of like the lighter part is being hit from the sun, which is coming in this direction, and the darker part would be under here. I'm going to make another layer. I'm going to clip it and I'm going to go a little bit brighter and a little bit up this way on the color wheel so that I'm staying in the same color you, but I'm gently going brighter and warmer because the sun warms everything up. And so I pick my pencil up and I keep putting down layers of color and then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to gently soften it. I can lower my opacity on this so that I soften it mildly. I prefer this option to Gaussian Blur sometimes because it allows me to move the paint and leave little hairs, little strokes where the paint is blending with the other paint. Sometimes Gaussian Blur goes more blurry and I don't want a blurry look to my pieces. I want a blended look, which is a little bit different. Now I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go to yellow and I'm going to go whiter. And I'm going to add this right on the very edge. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to blend this out because the very top of the mushroom is going to be the one hit by the most sun. And that is how I will gently blend from my darkest values to my lightest values with a medium value in between. 
Now, sometimes you get interesting looks. All of these are in normal blend mode. Blend modes can add a lot of interesting effects to the things that you do. And sometimes you just have to play around and see what they do. You can also layer different blend modes on top of one another. So I'm going to start with my medium green here. And see this color dodge gave it a little bit more vibrancy right in here to this green. And I like that. I want it to be vibrant. And now I'm going to take my darker mode and see if it changes anything in a way that I like. It is look really dark there. But I can bring this down on a multiply level. I can put a color burn. I can go back to my normal, which is up here. And I have a nice soft transition. I can take one of my brighter levels and see how much intensity it adds to my mushroom on color dodge is a nice intensity. Depending on the look that you want, I can control the brightness. So if you're all the way up here, don't worry that it looks a little harsh because you can come down gently. I can also take the lightest one and I can make it look more translucent like that iridescent green is really lit up up here at the top. Or I can make it more of the lighter color. There are a variety of different things you can look at when you're choosing blend modes. So I'm going to go with the color dodge because I like that. Now, one of the things I want to talk about is merging blended layers. All of these layers here are clipped to this main piece down here. In order to blend all of these layers down, you have to start in a certain process. It's always best to have a full opacity solid layer on the bottom so that your blend modes are interacting with the solid base and not something more transparent where things will show through. And so if you have a normal layer and a normal layer, you can blend them, merge them here, and they won't change. If you have a blend mode layer and a blend mode layer, which would be these two, if I drop this layer down, you can see what it did to the very top of the mushroom. Now that would make you think that blend mode layers can't be merged, but they can. There's a certain order. And the best thing to do is to start at the bottom and to merge down your layers one at a time. And you'll see that my mushroom is not changing. I am now merging blended layers and I have a perfectly fine blended mushroom cap. Now I'm gonna come back because I don't want to blend them yet. I want to show you, I'm gonna put a layer on top of here and I wanna show you that you can change the color of your piece by simply changing the bottom color. I want to shrink that down and change the blend mode layer. Now all of this is working and this darker part seems to be creating more of a mark. So I'm going to come in here. Am I on the right layer? No, I'm not. And I'm going to come in here with my smudge tool and I'm going to smudge the edge of this, which wasn't quite as visible on the darker green, just so that it looks more blended. And then I can play with this layer and see I can play with this solid color later layer and see the different effects that I can get or the different colorways my mushroom might actually actually work in. I can also change the color to say an orangey color, in which case I get a very golden kind of mushroom. I can play with the levels of this and I can bring it up. It's on normal and get a brighter color. I can lighten it to get a more subtle color. If I like this, I can lower the middle color, which would be, that's the brighter color, 
which would be this one here, which is the bottom color. And I can change the blend modes on that to see if I can soften it and make it all work. And so now I have a beautiful rusty colored mushroom. So there are a lot of options when you're playing with blend modes. Each one affects the other one below it. You never know how things are gonna turn out. You just keep experimenting. I can pull the purples up. I like this. I still think I wanna blend right over here just a little bit on this layer here. There seem to be some strong marks. Each color reveals how much of the paint marks are left. And then I can still work on changing these, which see that one gave it a little bit more light coming over the top this way. So I encourage you to play with blend modes. I encourage you to play with the different ways that you can add your shading, how strong you want things to be. And so now that I've changed this up a little, my bottom is not, my bottom layer here around the edge of my mushroom is not as dark. Now I can either add another layer and I can paint on it or I can duplicate that layer, which will darken it. And if it comes out too dark, I can lower the opacity on it. The point of the shading is to have a graduated tone from the dark to the light so that my mushroom actually takes shape and looks rounded as if it's turning underneath here. So this is shading with a painterly brush and a more smoother transition of shading. So I'm going to group this one. I'm gonna duplicate my mushroom cap and I'm going to come back here with a solid green color again because that's what we started with. I'm going to, I think the best way to get a solid green color, if you've painted something and you don't like it, make a clipping mask. Drag this color on top. Now I have a solid color and then merge it. This will allow you to change something that you've shaded where you want to start over, start right over from there.